It, is it then the, the case that, for instance, with, with now, d d this uh, set of songs that, that comprises the new album, uh, I don't know when you wrote them, but I can imagine it's all already been uh, a while. Yeah. Have they changed uh, meaning for you? Have they? Have the words yeah, changed? For kind you? of. Yeah. I mean, I. They sort of have, you know, and I think. They will too. I think, you know, being on the road sometimes. I fail to realize, like, oh damn, I'm gonna be playing these songs for like a year, you know, mm -hmm. and. But for me, I think the meanings always change. There's different events that happen, hmm. negative or positive, where you're like, oh, this song is now about this new puppy that I got. Or, you know, I don't have a puppy, but maybe <laughs> I dream of it sometime. <laughs> maybe maybe you know sometime I mean? in the future. Yeah, so... Um, well, the, 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 the words are sort of... The lyrics are kind of set up that way. Hmm. They're more contemplative hmm. um, than as if... I were to sing like I'm this dude living in wherever and you know I'm going to buy some bagels mm. and blah 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 you know so I mean I like bagels but I don't eat them all that much <laughs> but it's not a specific it's not it's just like a, a specific sort of storyline which could get pretty pretty mundane and boring if I was singing that every night you know right. um, you know with, with the song, to take it to the album, uh, for instance, uh, I think Stonehurst Cowboys is one where you did have your father in mind. Mm, yeah. But, okay, that's, 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 I, I wasn't sure about that. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, that, that, that's a direct sort of dedication and like honor, honor sort of m m m memorial mm. to him, you know. But approaching a song in, in that way, then, did you know you were going to write that song or did it just fall out one day? I knew I was going to write it, actually. Um, but I, it just, I worked on it a lot. Mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to do kind of a tribute to him. And I knew the title because that was kind of one of his nicknames. Mm -hmm. It was kind of this ongoing joke with him. And um, he was somehow acquired that nickname <laughs> when he was a kid. And... He would always brag like, "I got the fastest hands, like in all of Delaware County and in Stonehurst." Like it was like this joke, but we would always kind of tease him about it. Um, so, yeah, it's referencing that, and yeah, just you know, it's just a bit of like a tribute to him, you know, because right. he was a really hilarious, funny, kind of hard, hardworking person, you know, sensitive as well. But then, and I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you really got to know him in the last couple of years in his, uh, of his life. Yeah, we were from. always close, but yeah, it was interesting to know that. And I felt grateful that we had this time together. Mm. You know, a lot of people, it's unfortunate when they lose a loved one when it happens quickly and there's no time. But we had time and it was a, it was a you know, really nice mm. time to kind of get closer and chit-chat and even even have a laugh you know like it was cool it was really what, what did I, what did he think about what you were doing your music and, and um he i mean he he loved he was like super into it okay. you know um and i think i got into i think one milestone for me and for him was you know i've been in to get into like the local paper like mm. philadelphia inquirer <laughs> he was like you're in the Enquirer, man. You know, like there was some review or something. Um, so that was for him to like open the paper and see that. I think that was a huge mm -hmm. sort of achievement, you know. Th for that's, me. that's when you made it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he, yeah, he's super, super supportive and came to my shows and met my bandmates and, you know, hanging out, slugging beers and, <laughs> you know. Uh, very good. Um, <laughs> What I like about uh, what we talked about, and, and we talked about the way poets use language and, and, and things, but one added element, I suppose, in music is music. Yeah, so right. do you use music? And, and for instance, um, well, a couple of songs stood out for me, but a new familiar, uh, I, I thought the, the music was very immersive and, and mm. kind of, uh, I don't know how to... It's pretty repetitive. There's a, there, there was something uh, hypnotic, uh, maybe yeah. a, a little bit about it. Yeah, there's like this long, it's kind of just this sort of like basic 
guitar loop kind of thing that's like going on through the whole song and it, and it like builds up mm. and, and then you know I do like a lead <laughs> but yeah it's almost like this like cyclical guitar loop with me sort of rapping over it you know. but it is do you approach music in the same way we've just talked about uh, the words to kind of uh, sketch an idea but not make it too clear what it is and then yeah I do I mean it's sometimes by default because <laughs> I'm not like a like I can't write music or mm. transpose things too quickly or anything like that so I basically kind of come up with little ideas And, you know, part of the way that I come up with stuff is just freely playing and freely singing. So a lot of the demos, they all, all the songs kind of come from, from me doing that as an exercise. So, yeah, it's sort of like, well, obviously I get it, I get it into a little bit better shape before I record the songs. But right. a lot of the songs, that's kind of how I kind of come, come up with them, you know, just and by playing a lot. And sometimes I'm like, I don't even realize That it like, it just sort of, uh, just because I was playing a lot and just saying like, okay, I would record like little bits and pieces, and then I'm like, oh wow, wow, actually that the way that I'm singing that and the way that, like, I'm what I'm playing and the way that I'm phrasing both things is, is cool and I, like I, I wouldn't kind of realize it and then I would kind of listen back to all the stuff that I had done. Obviously, a lot of it was like, no way, but. <laughs> Sometimes I would tap into these things just by, just kind of by chance, you know. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the more I was kind of working in that way, a lot the 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 more kind of ideas that were kind of coming up. You know? This might sound like a weird question, but in a way, was this, was this the the easiest album you've made? Or, or yeah, it's not a weird question. Weird questions are encouraged, <laughs> but no, it really was. Yeah, because I felt like uh, I. There wasn't any, I didn't feel any pressure, and like, I also wanted to feel comfortable, and I had played so much, and I felt strongly about the songs, and I also had this idea of being comfortable in the studio, and like, knowing that that will help, mm. and I also wanted to be ready, and I had the time to really get the songs right, And be able to play them before I went into the studio. Like mm -hmm. in the past, I've just like pieced things together. Like, okay, I'm gonna track this, and then vocals over this. And mm -hmm. I think something gets lost along the way. If if you were, for me particularly, because I got really into thinking about being a performer and and how how do you capture that? You know, mm -hmm. and I wanted to just go in there and, and like, okay, I'm gonna play these songs. I'm like, let's record them. And the fact that I hooked up with like the band that I had on the record. This guy Tony Garnier, who right. plays with Dylan, and a really great drummer named TJ, and it just—it almost felt like a real session, mm -hmm. where I was like, the, "We're here to play your song, so you better be able to play them." <laughs> you know, it wasn't like this like delicate, like tantrum throwing kind of thing. It was like, okay, like, like I'm gonna sing this one. What key is it in? Like, okay, and you know, Tony would be like, "Can you print the words?" And he'd be like. Playing like cool, and then so he it was all it was always like treating the songs like for the songs for the sake of the song, mm. which was was it was the first time I ever kind of like approached the record, and I feel like it it really paid off, and it felt easy, you know, mm. and I didn't want to, I just felt like the the style of writing that and the playing parts, it just, it just was like simple, and I was like, whoa, is this <laughs> this is how this is is this way too simple? I'm like no, it's Just like, like focus on your singing, you know, sometimes like even I'll bring up Dylan again, but like or Velvet Underground, it's like those are two chords, mm. you know, some of those best, some of those songs that everyone loves, like, you know, Waiting the for simpler the, man, the just, better. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it felt easy. Totally. Finally, then. Because uh, well, you mentioned a couple of a couple of piece, uh, people. That I wrote down Tony Garnier, uh, James Elkerton, Mac Baird, uh, TJ. Mm. When you make an album with these kinds of people, um, do you think it was, because it's it's very much that album? Then was there ever a moment where you thought about the live show and and kind of trying to figure out how how to translate it? Yeah, yeah. Um. 
It's interesting because the record was recorded as I was like basically kind of live. Okay. Like the we're all playing at the same time essentially. Mm. The drums and the bass are in one room. I'm in another room. I could see them, and I have my acoustic, and I'm singing and playing. And I did that for like every song. So we we're. It's almost like we did. We kind of did the work already, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had that in mind, you know. But we're we played a few shows already, and we're still kind of working it out. But I think once the album comes out, we'll be ready to do it you know and and final question kind of a, a little bit standard with the unseen in between when did that title uh pop up in your head um i don't i can't remember but basically like the titling titles are so difficult for me and um i had a few different ones you know basically i have i take notes like i'll, I'll either pull my phone out or grab my notebook and just mm -hmm. write stuff down. So I bas I had a list of like potential titles. So I kind of, I liked the rhythm of it, you know, like the rhythm of the mm -hmm. how it sounds. And I didn't want to use just one word. And for me, I don't know, it, it kind of had this multiple meaning. Um, it could be interpreted in different ways. And... I just also like the way that it sort of like looked, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I had a, a running, a few running titles and mm -hmm. I was sort of bouncing ideas off other people and that one at the very end was like, Psh! someone pointed it out to me. It was like, that's the one. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and it sort of made, it just made sense, you know. Yeah, and I was like struggling with, I was struggling with, with, you know, it's so strange to like have to give this thing like a name, you know, right. like, oh man. Should I call it like something or you know? I mean, so. it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thought that you because uh, I haven't heard that too much. Um, that you that you think about how it sounds and how it's written down, and that you think about those aspects of it alongside of, of kind of the, uh, some some internal meaning, but but to kind of how it flows, how it rolls off the tongue. That kind of it's interesting yeah. to hear that kind of uh, aspect of it, of right? Because right. I can imagine with. Uh, yeah, it must it must be difficult, especially after you after you've made a couple albums, you can't use your own name anymore. And that yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm ha You know, mm. I think it it also it's in, it's interesting. It took a while for me to sit with the sequence of the record and like mm. think about what all the songs as a whole kind of mean and. And it, it's so hard to get a perspective on that as you're making it and as you're trying to solidify things. So the title really kind of reflect, reflects on like me thinking about like mm. how do I sum it all up, I guess. But this is one more question then because it's popping in my, in my mind. But in this day and age, you obviously have streaming services and, and people say it's kind of the decline of the concept album. But do you mm. still see it as a very cohesive whole or are they quite independent in a way the for songs mm -hmm. um there's a yeah i think they're they're independent but also i think they fit mm -hmm. there's like a certain thread going through them i think they fit together in a, in a cool way mm -hmm. like you know i i knew that what the first song was going to be and what the last song was going to be and i kind of had this idea that it was going to maybe arc up and then get mellow and then sort of like walk off into the the sunset or whatever, you know, so it all kind of fit together. And it's weird because as I'm writing it, it's definitely not. But then when you make the sequence, you're like, oh, you know, you're like touching on these different things or. Mm. Yeah. So it's I think more so than than other albums or random things that come out. I think about records as a whole a lot, Okay. you know, not just like cracking out with a new single or whatever you know right well, Steve, I know that's important too but you know it's, it's, well the times are shifting in, in, yeah uh, right. I suppose and then right. everybody has to f we're still on the frontier with that yeah in, in a way it's all so changing we'll, we'll, we'll see how, uh, where that whole thing goes <laughs> <laughs> um, but Steve uh, thank you very much for your time of course thank you thank you yeah see you next right. time yes certainly <laughs>